Is there a fatal flaw with a Gen 3 Hemi engine? I'm about to tell you the truth about it, right now. So why should you listen to me anyway? Who am I? Well, my name is Sky, and I've been a certified Chrysler technician for the last decade. So I work on these engines almost every single day. I know the things that commonly go wrong with them, I know how to fix them, and I know how best to prevent them in the future. So let's talk about the major flaw in the Hemi engine. So the most common thing that comes to people's minds when they think about the Gen 3 Hemi, as far as problems go, they think about what's called the Hemi tick. Now, I wanna be clear that there are two different primary causes for a ticking noise on a Hemi engine, and I wanna be able to differentiate the two for you. The first thing is when you very first start the engine up in the morning, and you hear a tick, 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 and then gradually, after a minute or two, that noise goes away. That is not a lift or tick scenario, okay? Pretty much what you're dealing with there is an exhaust leak. The Hemis are absolutely notorious, especially in the trucks, that they will break the rear bolt of the exhaust manifold, perhaps even both of them, and then you'll develop an exhaust leak at the rear of the manifold. That will tick on startup, and then after the engine heats up, the metal expands, they come back, the surfaces come back together again, and the noise goes away. That again is an exhaust leak, not a lifter tick scenario. Where are you going to hear a lifter tick? Well, primarily you will notice a lifter tick noise after the engine is fully warmed up. Once it's to its operating temperature and idling as low as possible, you'll hear that tinging noise or that ticking noise inside the engine. Now, I've always likened the noise to it almost sounds like there's a ping pong ball loose inside the engine bouncing around. It just has that kind of intermittent like tung, ting, tung, ting, tung, ting type noise. That's what it sounds like to me. That is a lifter tick scenario. And that's what we're dealing with in a Gen 3 Hemi when people talk about the infamous Hemi tick. All right, so now you've identified that is in fact a lifter issue on your vehicle. Why is that such a problem? Well, in the Hemi engine, you have to actually remove the cylinder heads to get the lifters out of there. And more than likely, if you have an actual lifter concern, your camshaft is likely damaged as well. So you have to take the timing cover off, timing chain off, remove the camshaft, replace that. So really it's not the easiest job in the world. It's not the hardest job either. You can accomplish it. And now I'm gonna show you the exact parts that are involved. All right, so first off, I wanna talk about the actual lifter assemblies themselves. These are them, they come in these packs of four that slide into the engine. If you'll notice, there's some differences here between the lifters. These two have these little pins in them that allow them to be collapsed. This is part of the multi-displacement system on these engines that allows you to shut down four of the cylinders to make it a four cylinder to get better fuel mileage. Now, the MDS lifters are the ones that generally fail. I can't tell you exactly why that is, but I do know that the MDS lifters are more often than not the ones that the roller lifters fail. Now this one here, this is in your cylinder one. So the surface of the roller looks a little different than all the rest. And there is a little bit of movement there in the needle bearings, more than there should be. This is the first one that I pulled out and I thought, okay, well this could be our issue here, but it got worse. Here, there's our roller lifter from cylinder number seven. You can definitely see that this one is well damaged and it has a ton of up and down play. And in fact, you can see on the ears of the roller lifter that it's actually started to eat into those as well. Because once, once the bearings fail on this thing, they drop down far enough that the ears actually will contact the cam lobe itself. I continued inspecting. All right, so here is cylinder six, and this is by far the worst one yet. This one's got all sorts of movement in it. And you can see the wear pattern on the roller itself. And the ears of the lifter are starting to wear as well. So again, that's our worst one. So we have three damaged lifters on this one engine. That again, makes it really difficult to actually narrow down which cylinder has the actual issue. Sometimes the vehicle will set a check engine light so you can kind of know like which one is the real issue. But honestly, you're going to do them all anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Just take them all out, replace them all, and replace the camshaft as well. All right, now let's take a quick look at the camshaft and see what it does to the lobes. Here is cylinder six. You can see it's just eating right through the lobe itself. 
and it'll eventually eat that down completely around if you let it go forever. And then there's cylinder seven, same situation. It's very much eating into the lobe itself. But we caught this one early enough, we can just get away with replacing the lifters and the camshaft. As you can see, that's a pretty serious issue. And that's actually what develops your misfire is these lobes get worn down far enough to where eventually you're not really opening the valves anymore and it'll start to give you a misfire on that cylinder. So this definitely seems like a pretty big issue with this engine. Seems like a design flaw, right? Well, maybe so and maybe not because not everyone is going to have this issue. So what determines those who have problems with their lifters and those who don't? So on the Hemi engine, the lifters are actually mounted almost horizontally. There's not a whole lot of angle to them. They're very much tilted down like that. So basically they need good oil flow to maintain that bearing surface and maintain these needle bearings in the rollers themselves. Well, what is happening on these ones with the failed lifters? Why are their needle bearings going? Well, clearly it's a lack of oil lubrication. But why is it happening? Well, Chrysler says it's because the oil is breaking down to the point where it can no longer lubricate correctly. So any situation in which the vehicle will idle for extended periods of time, like you see with fleet vehicles, like any sort of a work truck, or you see with police officers, that sort of thing, the vehicle is idling for an extended period of time, but your odometer isn't running because you're not going anywhere. So therefore, if you are doing your oil changes based on mileage alone, you're actually doing them too far apart and the oil is breaking down enough to where it can no longer lubricate the roller bearings. Do I agree with that? Absolutely I do because I've seen the evidence of it. Primarily the vehicles that I am doing cam and lifter jobs on, which I've done probably in the neighborhood of 30 or 40 of them, they've all been on fleet-based vehicles that have extended idle time. What Chrysler recommends, if you have one of these vehicles that's being used as a fleet vehicle or any situation in which it is going to idle for extended periods of time, that you are basing your oil changes off of the engine hours rather than the mileage. Now, engine hours are not that difficult to find. You can actually scroll through the cluster and it will tell you engine hours. Now, Chrysler does have a scheduled service interval based on engine hours that you can look up if you wanna do it that way. But basically that's what we're seeing. The engine oil is breaking down so much that these things are no longer lubricated properly and that's when they start to fail. So really the preventative measures for a lifter issue is very simple. Make sure you're doing your oil changes at the recommended intervals or perhaps even a little bit earlier. Nothing wrong with having some fresh oil in the engine at all times. If you're one of those who likes to stretch it out, well then you're putting yourself on the line out there. You might end up having a problem with the lifter issue. There is something different about the 6.4 liter engines. Honestly, I can't tell you what the difference is because I don't know. I just know that I see a more regular failure of lifters on 6.4s than I ever did on 5.7, some even as low as 15,000 miles. But again, I still think primarily it's rooted in making sure you have good fresh oil. Now, there could be a possibility of the fact that the Hemis run a 520 oil where the 6.4s run 040. I'm not sure if that's a factor in there or not, but regardless, the 6.4s do seem to have more lifter issues earlier on than a 5.7 does. So what is the truth about the Gen 3 Hemi engine? Well, it's a truth that you've known all along, that it makes great power. Look at all the Hellcats that are out there, the Scat Pack Challengers. All those vehicles make tremendous horsepower and it's based off this exact design. So really, is there a fatal flaw? No, it comes down to doing your oil changes at the proper interval as recommended. And if you're going to be idling your vehicle for extended periods of time, as in a fleet vehicle or a work truck, make sure you're doing your oil changes based on engine hours rather than on engine mileage. That's it, that's the whole secret. So now you know. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you appreciate the content or if you learned something, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you next time on Reignited.